Welcome to this video on Lewis diagrams. Lewis diagrams are where we draw the actual outer electrons that form bonds. The key thing underlying all of this is that atoms gain or lose electrons in order to form full outer shells. That makes them stable. So for example, if we have NH3, it has seven electrons, which means it uses up two in its first shell and has five electrons left over for its second shell. But in order to fill up its second shell, and we've drawn the five on the outer shell here, it needs another three electrons. So what nitrogen does is it forms bonds with hydrogens, because hydrogens each have one electron. Hydrogens want to fill up their outer shell, which just requires two, it's just the first outer shell. So they want to bond with nitrogen. So in this way, hydrogen shares the atoms with nitrogen. So nitrogen has eight electrons around it now, and each of the hydrogens share one of nitrogen's electrons, making sure that they have two each. And in this way, you can see that all atoms now have a full, complete outer shell. And that's a lot of why bonding takes place. What a Lewis diagram is, is this dot diagram where we draw the dots of the outer electrons for each atom. So for hydrogen, we had one dot next to it, which showed there was one electron in the outer shell. We don't draw all of them, we just draw the electrons in the outer shell. So for nitrogen, we didn't draw all seven electrons, we just drew the five electrons on the outside. And your quest is for hydrogen to fill it up to two electrons each, and for almost every other atom to fill their outer shells up to eight electrons each. You'll also notice, and it's common convention, to draw electrons in four pairs around it. So a pair up the top, a pair on the left and the right, and a pair down the bottom. Now that all atoms here have a full outer shell, let's look at how we can quickly figure out how many outer electrons each atom has. We can do this by looking at the periodic table, and you'll get a copy of this in your exam. You do it by looking at the group number. The group number up the top here will tell us how many valence electrons there are. So for example, all of the atoms in group number one will have one valence electron. All of them in number two will have two valence electrons. Now, for your exams, you don't need to care about all the ones from 3 to 12. We just start looking again at 13, and for here we can just ignore the 10 out the front. So for 13, you can know there's 3 extra electrons, 14, 4 valence electrons, 15, 5 valence electrons. So if we randomly select an atom, say selenium here, number 34, you can see straight away that it has 6 valence electrons. So this is how you get the number of dots for your atoms. So if we want to draw Lewis diagrams for the following compounds, let's see how we do it. You draw each of the atoms separately. So if we look at oxygen, you can find it on the periodic table here, look up and it's in group 16, so it has six outer electrons. Also, we're going to look at hydrogen, that's in group number one, that has one outer electron. And we've got two hydrogens here. Oxygen wants to get to eight, hydrogen wants to get to two each, so they can share. So here we have H2O and all of them have full outer shells. And finally, let's look at H2CO. If we start off with C, we see on the periodic table that that has four outer electrons. H each has one outer electron, and O has six outer electrons. So let's draw them in first, so H will share with each one of these carbons, so we've got those two bonds, and then if we have O, remember O wants to gain another two, not just another one, and this carbon to get eight will want another two, not just another one, so they're gonna share in a double bond. And now, all atoms have full outer shells. H's have two, and the rest of the atoms have eight. And this is how we draw Lewis diagrams. So what you need to know from this video, you draw the number of valence electrons as dots around an atom, and we'll do it in pairs. Secondly, atoms share electrons to complete their outer shells, so they'll share them with each other. For example, we looked at H2O, where we have the valence dots around there, we have the hydrogens in there with one outer electron each, and they share the electrons to complete their outer or their valence shells. Valence just means the outer shell, same meaning. So let's look at a question now. We need to draw the Lewis structure, or what's called the electron dot diagram sometimes, for each of these following molecules. So PCl3, you'll need your periodic table to see, but P has five electrons in its outer shell and Cl each has seven in their outer shells. Each chlorine atom wants to share one more from P, and P wants another three, so this works out perfectly. So we share one electron each between the P and each of the Cl's. Now let's look at CO2. C, if you look on your periodic table, has 
four outer electrons and O each has six. So C needs to gain an extra two electrons from each of these oxygens. And the oxygen needs to share two electrons with the carbon so that they both get up to eight electrons each. So we can draw it on as CO2 like this. And finally, if we look at H2S, S has six outer electrons. H each has one, so they're gonna to want to share one each, making H2S. So H has two outer electrons and S has eight. All the outer shells are complete. And this is how you draw Lewis diagrams which show the electron sharing in bonds.